In this video, we're going to answer the question, which type of music producers earn more money on average? And for context, we'll primarily be focusing on smaller, independent music producers who are trying to figure out the best way to make a living because that's who primarily watches these videos. This may be a little controversial, but my goals with this video are to one, open your mind up to new opportunities, two, help you determine if you are using your talents in the right market, and three, understand the advantages and disadvantages of certain genres so that you can make better decisions as you grow your music production business. If we don't know each other yet, I'm Daniel Grimmett from Dark Label Music. We provide management services to freelance music producers. And on this channel, I share what I've learned over the past 11 years, helping music producers of all sizes with the business side of their careers. This is all just based on my personal experience, so feel free to share in the comments if yours is different. I don't claim to know everything. So let's first take a look at the different types of producers we'll be discussing, and then we will break down the details for each one. These aren't in any particular order, but at the end, I will give you my conclusion. We're going to cover producer engineers, producer songwriters, beat makers, and electronic music producers. If I missed one, then let me know. So let's start with beat makers. And I'm referring to producers who are generally in the trap R&B or hip hop market who produce beats with the intention of selling or leasing those beats to artists. Now, the good news is that based on streaming data, it's the most popular genre of music in the US. And on the major industry side, I've seen some massive royalty checks. You can become wildly successful here, but it's much harder for smaller independent beat makers. Hip hop is a very fast paced market. And because the barrier to entry is a lot lower, tons of people can jump on and start doing it. Not to mention the beat leasing model, which is more of an internet thing than it is a music industry thing, has devalued this skill dramatically and affects this market much more than others. The music industry is a relationship business and leasing beats is more of a transactional product business. It can be great for people discovering that you exist and it can be great from a profitability standpoint, right? Like make a beat once and it continues to sell over and over again and you earn money. However, in my experience, this seems to all come down to who is the best internet marketer, not necessarily who is the best producer. And it's hard to truly be great at both of those things. And this model only seems to get harder and harder over time instead of getting easier over time, which you'll see as an advantage for other types of producers later on in this video. Rappers generally aren't dropping high production fees because most of them are looking for beats, not necessarily looking for a producer. There's a big difference there. The market has access to cool sounding beats at a very low cost, so sure, why not just do that? Why are they gonna pay a producer a bunch of money? Talking about independence here. Now, R&B is where it gets into some gray area because those artists could really go either way depending on their creative process. Some of them just wanna buy a beat, but many others would rather hire a producer to produce a song, more like a pop or rock or country artist would. I've met a lot of producers who market themselves as beat makers, but don't realize that they have other skills that can actually put them into a different category of producers. So keep an eye out for that as you watch this video. On a scale of one to 10, I give this one a five. Hey, and real quick, I just wanted to say this. If you don't have the luxury of being able to test out what's working in the music business all day, then just subscribe to the channel and I'll do it for you. So let's look at electronic music producers. And for this, I'm referring to producers who are more on the path of a recording artist than they are a record producer or freelancer. These could fall under any subgenre of electronic music, EDM, house, trap, lo-fi beats, etc. But generally they are focused on releasing original music or remixes so that they can build a fan base, earn royalties, and bring in revenue from live performances and merchandising. My favorite part about this market is the diversification of income streams. These types of producers generally have more public attention and fame than other types, which means that they can monetize their brand in many different ways. However, the tough part here is that it's a very long-term play and takes a while to earn any money, if ever at all. There isn't a business model built in to fund the early stages of their career unless they are very savvy. I do realize that many of these producers want to go out and offer production services to other artists so that they can earn some money. And in theory, that does make sense. 
but I've found it's more difficult for them to compete in this market because it takes a lot of work. And at the end of the day, they would rather just be making music for themselves, not other artists. So on a scale of one to 10, I give this one a six. Let's talk about producer engineers. What I'm referring to are producers who generally record bands. It could be metal, rock, country, anything else, but generally it involves a band showing up to a studio to make a record in the more traditional sense. This is what I came up as, and I'll say that I find it the most fun. There's a few benefits to this market. It generally requires a lot of skills, so it's a higher barrier to entry. Not everybody can just jump in and start doing it well. They are more likely to land multi-song EPs or LPs, so the projects overall can have a bigger scope. And even though these producers sell their time via hourly, or day rate in most cases, these projects take more time than just making a beat. So it can add up and you could see a lot of money here. However, this market has one really big obstacle that can make my job as a business consultant very hard. And that's location. I can't magically parachute a bunch of great bands into their hometown. So where they live will have a large effect on their success. Not for all of them, but for most of them. And there are a lot of successful bands, but because we don't see a lot of bands in the top 40 like we did 20 years ago, I've been told that the overall belief of success is much lower in this market. I don't think in reality that's true, but I'm talking more about their own perception. So on a scale of one to 10, I give this one a six as well. Before we dive into this last one, I just wanna make you aware of the treasure chest of stuff we have down in the description box under the video. If you need one-on-one -on -one help, you can find it there. If you want more business classes and podcast episodes, then you'll find that there too. I can only go so deep with this stuff on a short YouTube video, so go check that out. And the last one is my favorite kind of producer, producer songwriters. These are producers that in many cases have a very diverse set of skills and are harder to compete with. They can make beats, but can also compose and write songs and engineer. And many of them are competent at one or a few different instruments and may even be classically trained as well. They're just overall great song makers. And you'll primarily find these producers in the pop market or subgenres of pop. However, they're kind of hard to categorize because it isn't uncommon that they will be working with many different genres to make songs for the artists that they serve. These producers typically prefer to work with artists in person, but they have the benefit of being able to do everything remotely, so location isn't an obstacle for them. Artists pay these producers a production fee up front, which is the best model, in my opinion, for smaller, independent producers who need steady income. Now, the tough part about this market is that you really have to love working intimately with artists, which can come with its own problems, right? Dealing with people. It's a lot easier to just make a beat, sell it, and be done. However, these producers don't need a ton of clients to survive, and since this is built on relationships more than a transaction, you have more control over your reputation, and that can make it easier to earn money in the future because you're growing with these artists. Also, these projects generally take less time than recording a full band, but can yield the same amount of income. Overall, this type of producer, the producer songwriter, has many benefits from the other types of producers we talked about earlier in the video. They most likely possess the skills to record and charge for studio time. They could sell beats in addition to full production projects, and they might even release their own music and build a brand for themselves. Think Pharrell or Mark Ronson. So on a scale of one to 10, I give this one a nine because on average, out of the thousands of producers I've talked to on the phone, these producers seem to earn the most money in my experience. And as you think about your best path to success, I recommend you watch this video where I share the story of how I built a seven-figure music production business in my 20s using two superpowers. Peace out.